product. So when you're studying the Bible, you should do the same thing. You should make it about the experience, more of this internal expression and this outward connection. And the studying becomes its own journey and not to come up with a perfect set of rules and answers where you have this final snapshot of what you're supposed to do. You're, you're denying yourself a quality of your nature that actually is very expansive. And you're, you're guilty of it, the religious right who insists that they know the truth and that if we study this, we can come up with the mission and we can expose the truth. We know the answer. And they can, and they have this sort of collective idea of what the answers are. And some of them are kind of dangerous. Some of them are oh so preoccupied with the end of days that they actually have created a, a flowchart or, or some kind of step-by-step -step, uh, triggers to bring about Armageddon so that Jesus will return, because they believe that they have to do these, like a checklist. Yep, we did this, we did this, we did this, and after this, this will start the last war, and Jesus will come in and bring about peace. That's like, we don't have to go through all that. We can create peace on earth by ourselves. We don't have to go through all that. We're not supposed to focus on the end of days. They've over-intellectualized their studying. They've taken themselves too seriously. They've lost the innocence and the sweetness of experiencing the love that one can connect with Jesus in that washing with the blood of the Lamb. I and mean, you have to actually do it all the time. But if you're thinking about the Bible as some kind of instruction manual to bring about the end of the world, just so you I know it sounds kind of twisted, because, but you can justify it because we bring about the last world. You know, Armageddon is going to be the last apocalyptic destruction, destructive force on earth. And once that happens, Jesus comes in. And to me, that's rationalization. You are rationalizing your checklist as if it is really going to provoke the return of Christ. I don't believe it. The experience, because you can have peace on earth, you can have peace within yourself right now. I mean, it takes some doing, but it is always trying to stop yourself from either intellectualizing, like progressives, or dogmatizing, like the religious, who are becoming so caught up in the Word that they have lost their relationship in Christ. They have lost the ability to connect soulfully to the spiritual, the spiritually divine. And that is a huge problem. And one that we we have to change. We can't give in to the, I mean, because we have a brain, we think we have to use it, but we're not using it well. We can, what we end up doing is we're letting our fear-based emotions dictate, and we just use our intellect to reinforce our primal reactionary self. And that's a problem. It, the intellect becomes useless if it's just there to see how well we can maintain our fear. That now that we have a politics of fear, 
we can now say, yeah, great. We can we can write laws. We can do things that will help perpetuate our expression of our own fear. And that's not what we want. That's not how politics should be used. Politics should be used to help us lift ourselves up, not to keep ourselves down. And, and unfortunately, both sides end up doing it. The religious right and the progressive left, they are always intellectualizing everything and trying to justify why we have to do this and this, and they're not getting to the real core of spirit, the real power that we can have within ourselves. Because remember, it is about just the basic formula that Jesus was trying to teach us. And it is, it really is thinking. We don't think about sin. Jesus didn't really talk about sin. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah don't, don't sin. But he didn't tell you what you should do. He just said, yeah, right, follow sin. But that was such a, a small part of it. Yes. Of course, you shouldn't sin. Because if you sin, you're not opening yourself up to my love. That's why he gave us those little formulas. You don't judge yourself or others. In fact, I expand it a little bit, and he even says it, because that's how you are in, in God. When you're in God, you're not judging the moment. So he said it. <coughs> he lived it. He lived it all the time. What we're supposed to do is to try to be that way. To not judge ourselves or each other. And definitely don't judge the moment. Open that moment up. Don't analyze. Stop it. Sometimes you have to, but most of the time you don't. You just experience it. And you open yourself up. That's how you open yourself up. And you can get to that deeper quality where you can forgive yourself for your fearful nature, and you keep washing yourself with the Lamb of God, or whatever works for you to just keep those fearful impulses at bay, and then you can get to a place where you wash the fear in yourself that you can now forgive others. And you can help them wash away those fear-based thinkings and impulses that keep us from spirit. So it's a constant need to keep washing. And then when you finally get to the place of love where you can love yourself and love others, you will generate that peace in yourself. And believe me, if enough of us have this kind of peace, we will have peace on earth. It is possible. It really is possible. This is not just some kind of <clears throat> cult thinking. This is this is Jesus at his best. This is what this is what he wants for us. That's what Muhammad wants, that's what Krishna wanted, that's what Buddha wanted. All of the spiritual leaders want these kind of qualities. So stop focusing about avoiding sin. That's not helping. Avoiding sin. Like, I'm not going to break the law. Because if I break the law, I'll go to jail. I mean, that's the same kind of thinking. And it's like, yes, of course. We need to obey the law. And yes, we need to obey the, <coughs> the laws <coughs> that are set in the Bible. I mean, not all the laws. I mean, if, as I understand it, there's 175 different sins. I feel like, oh, you can categorize them based on the, the top ten, you know, the ten commandments. But it's like, and even then, you ask Christians what, the, what are the ten commandments? Most of them don't know what all ten are. Because it's not important. Because we do have a sense of right and wrong. So we know when we're in spirit, when we're in spirit, we're not sinning. We're opening ourselves up. We're in that place with God. So you don't have to think. You're thinking too much about the rules of God. You don't have to. 
Stay in the moment. That's where you get your power. That's where you get your experience. That's where it leads to this broader connection. That experience that originally brought you to Christ, that's what you'll get to experience all the time. That's what you should experience. So the progressives need to let go of their intellectual hold on science. Not that the science isn't beautiful, because it is. But you've got to allow yourself this grandeur connection, this deeper connection, this soulful connection. You have to not reject the concept of a soul, even if you can prove it scientifically. <coughs> We still want to have that ability to generate the power within ourselves to the external power around us. So progressives got to lay off their intellectual tendencies, and the religious have also got to let go <coughs> of their need to intellectualize their faith. You don't have to prove it. That's not where it's done. It's not done in the head. It's all done in the experience. That's where you need to stay. Stay a moment to experience what you know you have within you and know what you have around you. So that is why politics becomes rather a trivial perspective. This should not be the arena we should be fighting in because it's all creating all sorts of problems. We need the polity, and if we, you know, if the religious can maintain their spiritual quality, and the progressives can develop that spiritual sense, then our politics will follow suit. Remember, we created politics to try and get along and create laws and stuff like that. But right now, it's terribly weak. It's terribly easy to use politics to justify your fear-based thinking. And that's not getting us anywhere. This is not going to help us personally, and it's not going to help the world around us. So I do want you to use the quality you've experienced in your religious journey and for progressives to develop a deeper spiritual quality so that we can make this world a more spiritually enriched environment where good things can happen. <coughs> That's the power that we can have. That's the power that can be generated. We've had enough of the experiment. We don't have to have any other ideas. We've had the ideas. We've had enough of the spiritual leaders to tell us what is important. And they all say the same thing. You've got to rise up out of your base nature. You don't want your politics to suck you back into fear. You want to rise above that. So that's where you try to maintain that spiritual connection. That's what you want. That's what you want for yourself, and that's what you should want for the rest of the world. So stop fearing each other. Let's really come to a place where we can actually understand the spiritual quality within us so that we can tap into the spiritual quality around us. Okay, folks. My time is up. Thank you for the experience allowing me to express myself. Again, this the journey was its own beauty. This is where I was able to connect spiritually throughout this two hours. I can't believe it went by so quickly. But keep the faith, but don't overthink. Stay in the moment. Create that washing. Forgive your nature. Come to a place of love so that we can have peace. That's where we need to be. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a good night.